In this episode, we'll be discussing PMI numbers from the US, the UK election and how it's affecting the pound and the Eurozone, all with Bob Mason of FX Empire. Hello, Bob, and thank you once again for joining us today. It's the middle of the first week of December, which historically is a busy period. Uh, but what can you tell us has been happening during this week? It was a busy start to the week on the economic calendar. Private sector PMI numbers out of China from the weekend and at the start of the week gave the markets a boost. Uh, risk sentiment improved with private sector activity picking up in November. Main focus after that, however, was on private sector numbers out of the US with both non-manufacturing and manufacturing numbers coming out. The ISM figures, which is the market's preferred numbers, showed slower activity, which weighed on the dollar. On the monetary policy front, we saw the RBA and the Bank of Canada in action. As expected, both held rates unchanged. Following some weak economic data out of both Australia and Canada, however, there were some expectations of some more dovish statements from both. However, both held steady and did little chat on further rate cuts. The RBA is slightly concerned over the, the, chat, the chatter on consumer confidence. And at the end of what appears to be a positive week for the loonie, economic data on Thursday also was loony positive, suggesting that the Bank of Canada got it right. For the RBA, things were not so good for the Aussie dollar. GDP numbers disappointed. Trade data was also on the weaker side, as were retail sales figures, suggesting that the RBA is not quite out of the woods just yet. So all in all, positive, except for the US. The US dollar was under the hammer. It wasn't just the stats, however, with negative sentiment towards trade in the early part of the week, hitting the dollar hard. For the Eurozone, the numbers were better on the PMI front, but the reality is that you know the manufacturing sector continues to contract. And when we saw retail sales figures out of Germany and the Eurozone, that reliance on consumer confidence is gonna begin to wane should consumption continue to slow. With the ADP numbers out of the US on Wednesday hurting, you know, it's going to be very interesting to see how the non-farm payrolls and wage growth figures on Friday pan out. They're going to need to be pretty impressive to provide any support for the dollar. Any weak numbers following the ISM numbers earlier in the week, you know, and next week's Fed interest rate decision and more importantly, the economic projections are going to garner plenty of interest. The US PMIs have been released and along with the fundamental news, um, it somewhat moved the news regarding the UK elections into the background. Um, but with an important week coming up for the UK, maybe you can tell us a little bit more about what's going on there. It was a big week for the pound. The UK election drove it. Dollar weakness obviously contributed, but the Tories have, have got a decent enough lead going into the last few days of the campaign trail. Uh, the election is less than a week away. We saw the Tory lead narrow to single digits before recovering again going into this week. And the electoral calculus had the Tories predicted with a with a 28 seat majority that's recovering from a 12 seat majority going into last weekend. So all in all, it's been pound positive. The markets have set up their store, however. So there's a big unwind. Should we see the, the opinion polls narrow to single digits again in the last few days? And obviously, we've got Thursday night when election results start trickling in by constituency. Focus will definitely be on the marginal seats. You know, the Tories are expected to hold their existing seats. It's the marginal ones that will be a focus. They need to start grabbing some seats from Labour. It's all about Brexit. It's a big week. And ultimately, it's going to decide the fate of Britain and even Scotland's independence. If, they, if the Labour Party, you know, win or there's a hung parliament, you've got the SNP joining the Labour. And that's, that's going to deliver a Scottish independence referendum and an EU referendum for the Brits. That's, a, that's plenty of uncertainty for the pound. Um, if the Tories win, you know, short-term boost, that, that removes the uncertainty and delivers a, a, an orderly departure from the EU, which is definitely the market's favorite. It appears that the cable has surged somewhat, due mostly to the weakness in the US dollar and not necessarily the UK economy. How has the Eurozone handled this decline? For the Euro, it's been a bit of a mixed bag on the economic calendar. We saw private sector activity pick up in November, according to the finalized figures and numbers out of Italy and Spain. In spite of that, the manufacturing sector continued to contract and productivity was at the second lowest levels since the beginning of the year. Looking across the retail sales, numbers out of Germany and, and the Eurozone also failed to impress. You know, the Eurozone, the Eurozone has been reliant on consumer spending, as has the ECB. So the latest figures going into the fourth quarter uh, are a bit disappointing. 
And that comes on the, off the back of factory orders out of Germany as well, and industrial production are likely to come under pressure today after factory orders yesterday. So all in all, more doom and gloom in the, in the fourth quarter. In spite of this, the euro found support. You know, that's a lot off the back of the weakness in the dollar, sentiment towards trade. You know, it's, it's a dichotomy. The, the markets managed to brush aside the threat of tariffs on all French goods into the US. Um, however, with, you know, progress on trade being mixed, particularly the updates from Washington, um, the euro's found support and the dollar's taken a hit. Extended trade wars expected to be more negative for the US economy. So all in all, it's been a bit of doom and gloom for the eurozone, but the euro's stood its ground. Uh, policy next week will be interesting, but for now, you know, everyone's expecting a hold. Just the theory is that the manufacturing and service sectors have probably bottomed out. Optimists think so, and optimism within the private sector hit a five-month high in November supporting that. Thank you so much for joining us today, Bob. It was a pleasure as always, and we will see you again next week.